So acetylene, which is the simplest form of alkynes, this has two acidic hydrogens. And these acidic hydrogens, they are weak acidic hydrogens. If we look at the pKa of these hydrogens, it's about 26. So these are weak acids. So in order for these weak acids to be abstracted by the base, the base has to be a very strong base. Now, we know based on electronegativity, as the electronegativity decreases, as the basicity increases. So in this case, carbons are more basic. So if you have a base that has a carbon in it with a negative charge, this is more basic than a base that has a nitrogen in it with a negative charge. And that is more basic than a base that has an oxygen in it with a negative charge. So um, the list of the strong bases that can take these with weak acidic hydrogens, we prefer that they have a negative charge on the carbon or a negative charge on the nitrogen. So for uh, carb anions, this is a carbon with a negative charge, we will be using uh, alkyl lithium. So we will be using an alkyl lithium um, base. For example, an example of an alkyl lithium R can be um, a butyl group. It can be an ethyl group. It can be a methyl group. All of these are carb anions and these are strong bases. The butyl we abbreviated as BU. So if you see a BULI, this is a butyl group and this is a base. It is a strong base because carbon is the least electronegative. So this is one of the strong bases that we can use to pull out this acidic hydrogen. Another strong base that we can use to pull out the acidic hydrogen is the amide base, is the nitrogen with the negative charge. Sodium amide, okay. Um, this is another example of the base. This is called sodium amide. Of course, the uh, carbon ion is a stronger base than the N- minus in there. But those two are good bases in order to take the, um, the acidic hydrogen here, the weak acidic hydrogen. After those bases, we have uh, the sodium hydride base. Also, this one is a good base. This is sodium hydride. This is a good base in order to take the weak acidic hydrogen of the acetylide. And of course, if we use those bases in excess, then we will take both of the acidic hydrogens out in this case, and you will end up having a negative charge on each of these carbons. Another base is the uh, still a nitrogen base, which is the LDA, the lithium diisopropyl amide. We keep using this base over here or getting back to this base. This is a uh, very strong base, and it is a bulky base as well. So this is the LDA. It's the lithium diisopropyl amide base. We stay away from the oxygen bases. We can use the potassium tertiary butoxide um, in there, but we prefer to use the nitrogen bases, the hydrides, and the carbon ions in order to pick out this extra or this uh, weak acidic hydrogen. We're going to stay away from the NaOH and NaOR. So the alkoxide bases, the hydroxide bases, these are not good bases to take away, to take the weak um, acidic um, hydrogen of the acetylide. Meaning that if I have, let's say for example, if I have this terminal alkyne and I wanna react this with NaOH, then in this case, the reaction will not happen as written. The reason why it will not happen as written, um, this alkyne has this acidic hydrogen. Now, if this base comes and takes this hydrogen out, 
this is a negative charge. So if it comes and takes this hydrogen, you're going to form a negative charge on the carbon. So you're going to end up having your um, acetylide. This is called an alkyl acetylide. Ion. Okay. It's an alkyl because you have an alkyl group on this side. It's an acetylide because it's a carbon, a triple bond carbon. IDE is whenever you have on one of the carbons of the triple bond a negative charge. So that is going to be your conjugate base, plus you have water in there, which is going to be your conjugate acid. So if I want to label this, this is going to be the acid, this is going to be the base, this is going to be the conjugate base, and this is going to be my uh, conjugate acid. If you look at the direction of equilibrium of this reaction, you look at the acid and the conjugate acid, the pKa of water is more, um, or water is more acidic. So the pKa of water is 15, and uh, the pKa of this one is around the 26. So water here is more acidic than the uh, triple bond hydrogen. This means that the direction of equilibrium goes to the left. And if the direction of equilibrium goes to the left, this means that the reaction does not um, happen as written. This means that this is not going to be a good base in order to come and take this acidic hydrogen. Same thing for the OR. Your conjugate acid that always going to be produced with these types of bases is more acidic than the acidic hydrogen itself. This is why... Um, the reaction does not happen with those bases. On the other hand, if you have the following alkyne and you are reacting it with uh, sodium amide, um, by the way, sodium amide normally uses ammonia as a solvent. So this here acts as a solvent and this here ensures that the medium is basic. So this one is a solvent to make sure that the medium is basic. And all it does is that it mixes the amide together with the uh, alkyne together. So it's just a solvent to make sure that the medium is basic so that um, the amide will come and take the acidic hydrogen. So here, this is the acidic hydrogen there. So the base is going to come and take that acidic hydrogen. This is a negative charge because sodium is positive. It's going to come take the acidic hydrogen and form a negative charge on the triple bond. So you're going to end up getting your acetylide on. Acid-base reactions are very important in organic because the moment you have an acidic hydrogen, then this means that, you, um, and you have a base in the solution, this means that your, the reaction that is going to undergo first is an acid-base reaction. So you're going to get the negative charge on the carbon. So this is called an alkyl um, uh, acetylide ion in there. And this is the acetylide ion. It's the carbon, triple bond carbon with the negative charge in there. And the alkyl part is the R part that is connected to the triple bond. Now, of course, I'm showing the negative charge without showing the positive counter ion. So you will have the sodium always that balances the plus charge in there, plus um, the ammonia in there. This is your ammonia liquid. And that is going to be my conjugate acid. So you have your conjugate acid here and you have your acid in there. The pKa of uh, the triple bond is around uh, 26. The pKa of ammonia is around 36. So the direction of equilibrium goes to the right and it favors the product. So this is why the reaction happens in this case. We can do the same thing if we switch the amide into a hydride or into a uh, butyl lithium, something like that, for example. Um, don't forget that this reaction to happen, I need to have a terminal triple bond. So I cannot have this reaction happening if I have a triple bond that is alkylated on both ends. And then I go ahead and use the, uh, let's say, the butyl lithium. So if I use the butyl lithium in this case, um, there will be no reaction. Why? 
because this is going to be my base in there. So this is going to be my base that acts as a nucleophile. And don't forget that the triple bond is like a double bond. It is also a nucleophile. So you're going to end up having two nucleophiles together. So there will be no reaction. To have a reaction, an acid-base reaction, you would need to have um, a terminal triple bond. So you would need to have something like that. And now if I go ahead and use uh, butyl lithium, so butyl, this is four carbons. So that is going to be a butyl lithium in there. Now this is going to act as a base and that base is going to come and take the acidic hydrogen. So the base is going to come, take the acidic hydrogen, and form a negative charge on the carbon. So I'm going to end up having my um, acetylide, um, alkyl acetylide ion in there that is coupled now with the lithium plus um, the butyl now. This is going to be my butyl in there because my carbon um, over here picked a hydrogen and became a butyl group. If we look at the pKa of the triple bond, which is around 26, and we compare it to the pKa of the alkane, alkanes are the weakest acids. These are at the bottom of the pKa table in there. Um, the pKa is around uh, 62, I believe. Then you can easily see that um, the, uh, the, the triple bond is more acidic than the alkane, so this is why your direction of equilibrium in this case is going to lie away from the strong acid and is going to be towards the product. Now let's say if I start with acetamine and I want to abstract both of these acidic hydrogens. Then in this case, I would need to use an excess of the bases that I listed above. Any of those bases will do the job. So I'm going to use excess of um, the sodium amide or excess of the butyl lithium um, or excess of the sodium hydride or excess of the LDA. Excess of the base, meaning that I am reacting that base twice in there. So I'm reacting this base the first time to take that acidic hydrogen and form the acetylide on one carbon. So I will be ending up having a triple bond with a negative charge and the hydrogen on this end. And then I would be reacting that base again. So this is going to be the NH2. This is going to react again. And that base is going to come take the acidic hydrogen on the other side and make the acetylide again. So I'm going to end up having a negative charge on both of these carbons in there. The alkyl acetylide or the acetylides that are generated from these acid-base reactions, these both, they act as good nucleophiles and they are good bases. So this means that they can do um, S2 reactions and or E2 reactions based on the type of the alkyl halide or alkyl leaving group that I have. So um, let's say, for example, if I am reacting this, these two with a primary alkyl halide, I know that these two are negative charges. This is a primary alkyl halide. These are small bases and the primary alkyl halide does not go by E2 with a small base needs to be a bulky base, then definitely my product is going to favor the SN2 product only. Now, on the other hand, if I start with a secondary alkyl halide, then in this case, I'm going to end up um, having these two uh, negative charges to act as either a nucleophile or as a good base. So if they act as a good nucleophile, then I'm going to end up having the SN2 reaction. And if they act as a good base, then I'm going to end up having the E2 as well. So I'm going to end up having both SN2 and E2 um, reactions in there. And pay attention that if I am using heat, then elimination is going to be the major 
If I am not showing heat, then um, substitution is going to be the major, but you have to show both of these products. And then if I start with a tertiary alkylhalide, tertiary alkylhalide with those nucleophiles and bases does not go with SN2. It goes with only E2, so I'm going to have only elimination in this case because I cannot do SN2 reaction with a tertiary alkylhalide. So these two are going to behave as a base and not as a nucleophile. Let's uh, have, for example, an example in here whenever we are working with a uh, tertiary um, alkyl uh, leaving a group. Like, for example, this is an uh, BR in there. And I am reacting this with uh, um, a, a triple bond and a negative charge. This is the alkyl acetylide. So in this case, because this one is a tertiary, this is going to behave now as a good base. I know it's a good nucleophile, but I cannot do an SN2 reaction. I can only do an E2 reaction in this case. And if I do an E2 reaction, then I need to pick the alpha carbon hydrogen. Um, the number of beta hydrogens that I have here is two beta hydrogens. I cannot consider this one because this one is the same as um, this beta hydrogen over here. So I do have uh, two beta carbons and I do have two different beta hydrogens in there. So here you go. This is going to be beta 1 and this is going to be beta 2. And then um, the mechanism is it's a one-step mechanism. The base is going to come, take the beta hydrogen, form a double bond, and the bromine is going to leave. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. The base is going to come, take that beta hydrogen, form a double bond, and the bromine is going to leave. So I'm going to end up having um, a double bond over here. And then um, here you go. These are my two alkenes that I'm going to uh, form. This is a disubstituted alkene. And this is a trisubstituted alkene. Then I know that the trisubstituted alkene is going to be my Zaytsev product. The disubstituted alkene is not going to, it's going to be my minor product in this case. This is a disubstituted alkene because the double bond is connected to two carbons. And this is a try because the double bond is connected to three carbons. So this guy over here is going to be my zeta product. So this subramine in here, I can substitute that with the OTS as well. And the reaction will go exactly the same. If I am starting with a secondary output uh, OTS, then um, in this case, I would end up getting the SN2 product and the E2 product. Uh, remember that if you have a chiral center, then you're going to get the inversion in configuration. For the E2 here, you're going to get two products because we have two different types of uh, hydrogens in there. Both are going to be disubstituted, but this one around the alkene, you have the auto groups bigger then um, compared to uh, uh, this alkene over here where you have a CH3 and the three carbons on one side. So this is why this is going to be my Zeta product. So the point is, all the acetylides that you make in the acid-base reaction, they serve as good nucleophiles and good bases. They act as bases whenever you have a tertiary and a secondary alkyl leaving a group. Um, and they act as a nucleophiles if you have a primary and a secondary alkyl leaving group. They also act as a nucleophile in the ring opening of the epoxide. But because this over here is a negative charge, then you are uh, cleaving the epoxide um, in, uh, in a basic medium. So if you're cleaving the epoxide in a basic medium, in this case, this is going to be uh, attacking the less substituted carbon, opening the bond, forming a negative charge. After it forms a negative charge, then you're going to go ahead and protonate the oxygen by allowing the oxygen here to come and grab the hydrogen and the OH is going to leave. We keep saying OH is a bad leaving group. It's always a bad leaving group. But OH can leave only in one condition. If you are protonating, then yes, it can go ahead and leave. And when it leaves, 
over here is going to leave it in the form of an OH minus. And I already have sodium in the solution so that it can couple with sodium. This is why OH can leave because you have a positive counter ion in the solution that can couple with the OH in there. So in this case, I ended up adding my nucleophile to the less substituted carbon because this is the ring opening in basic medium. And um, that nucleophile needs room to attack. This is why it attacks the less substituted side. And the epoxide turns into NOH. This is exactly um, the same thing over here. The attack is going to be on the less substituted carbon. And the epoxide is going to open. You have to consider stereochemistry in here because the epoxide is locked in the cycle. So the OR nucleophile is going to come and attack from the opposite side of the carbon opening the cycle. The stereochemistry of the O in the epoxide is going to be retained. So your OH now, after the protonation, is going to stay in front, exactly the same as the epoxide. And your nucleophile is attacking from the back now.